of people jumping off the buildings, people trapping on planes, Flight 93, and my country was attacked. So I kind of, I took it personal. Dallas, Texas. Mark Anthony Stroman was born into abuse and without basic necessities. His stepfather physically abused him during his childhood. His mother, Sandra, was an alcoholic. She told him, you were just $50 short of being aborted. I wish I had borrowed the money. That statement stuck with him forever. Mark also grew up with his parents' racism, violence, substance abuse, and paranoia. Before age 10, he was diagnosed with mental health problems and then once again at age 13, but he never got proper treatment. As a juvenile, he was convicted of car theft, aggravated robbery, and burglary of habitation twice. When he was only 9 years old, he stole cars, bikes, sold and used drugs, was disruptive in school, and ran away from home. The superintendent of Collin County Juvenile Detention Center said Mark didn't succeed in any programs. He said he was troubled and needed a lot of counseling and guidance. Mark was arrested again for possession of a legal switchblade knife on September 20, 1985. On November 15, 1989, he was arrested for being in possession of brass knuckles. As Mark became an adult, he was convicted of burglary and sentenced to two years in prison for stealing rifles, jewelry, clothes, and checks from a man's house. The man never received his property back and his bank account was emptied by Mark writing hot checks. Mark was also sentenced to another two years in prison for stealing from yet another man. He robbed a woman on November 6, 1990, taking her purse outside of an auto parts store and using her credit cards. He was convicted of robbery and sentenced to eight years in prison. He was also convicted of two counts of credit card abuse and received two additional eight-year sentences to run concurrently. On July 14, 2001, Mark was arrested for carrying a firearm in an establishment that sold alcohol. He was indicted for unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon as a second offender but was released from jail on bond for July 16, 2001. He began his murder spree while out on bond. On September 15, 2001, Stroman murdered Baka Hassan by shooting him in the head of the grill as he grilled hamburgers in his Dallas store. He later told a fellow prisoner that his murder of Hassan was his ninth crime of this type. He also told him he had racial motives and was a member of a prison gang, and he also had a 44 pistol and automatic weapons. He intended to go to a mall and start killing everyone that was Middle Eastern. On September 21, 2001, Stroman shot and wounded Rias Buan as he worked in a convenience store and service station. Rias was shot in the face, but he survived. I had to go through several surgeries and finally the doctor could save the eye, but the vision is gone and I'm still carrying more than 35 pellets on the right side of my face. Once I touch my face, my skull, I can feel it, it's all bumpy. It took several years to go through all these painful surgeries one after one. On October 4th, 2001, Mark shot and killed Fasuidis Patel during an attempted robbery at a Mesquite gas station. A store security camera captured the attempted robbery and murder. Mark demanded money and as he reached underneath the cash register for his 22, he wasn't able to get it. Mark shot him in the chest. He said he prepped for the robbery and he didn't see any cameras. He also said he used a 44 chrome plated big long pistol on purpose. He was angry about the death of his sister in the towers of 9-11. He wanted vengeance for the attacks on New York and Washington. I'm not a serial killer, we're at war. I did what I had to do. I did it to retaliate against those who retaliated against us he said in a television interview. He wrote poetry in prison expressing his pride in his crimes. I cannot tell you that I'm an innocent man. I'm not asking you to feel sorry for me and I won't hide the truth, he told CNN. I am a human being and I made a terrible mistake out of love, grief, and anger. And believe me, I'm paying for it every single minute of the day. During the sentencing phase, he made an obscene hand gesture to Hassan's relatives. It took jurors no longer than an hour to convict Mark and sentence him to death. Rice looked to his faith in order to find forgiveness. According to my faith in Islam, there is no hate, no killing. It doesn't allow anything like that. Yes, he did a horrible thing, and he brought a lot of pain and disaster, sufferings in my life, but in return, I never hated him. Rice created a website called World Without Hate to educate others about hate crimes as a means of preventing them. I strongly believe executing him is not a solution. We will just simply lose a human life without dealing without the root cause, which is a hate crime. In Islam, it says that saving one human life is the same as saving the entire mankind. Since I forgave him, all those principles encouraged me to go even further, to stop his execution and save another life. He is also working with the Amnesty International. He made several appeals with Mark's lawyer about the death sentence, but it was too late. One of the 12 jurors who served in the trial made a last-minute appeal to the governor of Texas to spare his life. 
With only 24 hours left until Mark's scheduled execution, juror Jennifer Sheehan came forward to reveal how she was badly misled by the district attorney, Greg Davis. She also expressed regret at her decision in the case, insisting that she was not given an opportunity to understand the wishes of the victims. In a statement, she said, When I walked into the courtroom to serve as a juror, I believed in the death penalty. But as time has passed, I have come to deeply regret my decision to sentence Mark to death. He was executed on July 20th, 2011. Mark Stroman's last words were, The Lord Jesus Christ be with me. I am at peace. Hate is going on in this world, and it has to stop. One second of hate will cause a lifetime of pain. Even though I lay on this gurney, seconds away from death, I am at peace. I'm still a proud American. Texas loud, Texas proud. God bless America. God bless everyone. Let's do this damn thing.